It's story time! So today I'm going to tell you the story of how I reversed my dairy allergy. And this is something that um, a lot of people don't realize you can do, but you can reverse food allergies. So just because you're allergic to something, a lot of times it's from leaky gut, and so heal leaky gut and you get rid of your food allergy. So we'll start back at the beginning. Um, this is something that I have had lifelong. I was adopted and so I was formula fed. And my mom said that I always had like skin issues, like I was allergic to everything. And this is something that a lot of people will really have a problem with um, if they have an underlying allergy. It's like their system is so filled to the top with being allergic to something that even though they don't realize it because it's something they've always been, like eventually you'll sort of build up a tolerance to it. So I was on milk formula, this is in the 80s, and um, just whatever the can normal stuff was. This was a long time ago. <laughs> and. It's something like I had always sort of had skin issues, like rashes and weird stuff um, as a kid. They were told like you need healthy, you should have no fat and you should have milk with every meal, which is what my parents were good parents. They were trying to do well by their children. And so we ate a very low fat diet and we ate a lot of um, non-fat grains and non-fat milk. So that was just a kind of consistent thing. And growing up, um, the skin stuff never really went away. I was always super sensitive stuff like colored, like anything oddly colored, like shaving cream or something like that would make a rash come. And then I was also got tons of sinus infections. And this is something that a lot of people don't realize, but sinus infections often are the sign of an underlying allergy. And if you go to like the doctor, doctors usually say, oh, well, maybe her sinuses are just small, like for whatever reason, she's prone to infection. And it's just whenever I hear people say that, I'm like, you might just want to try eliminating dairy for a few days. And so as a rebellious teenager in Northern California, the first thing that I did um, as asserting my independence was became a vegan. And so ve the vegan culture is very, was very like common there in the 90s. It's probably still pretty common there. And I became a vegan, mostly to avoid eating any more of that dry chicken breast that I was so sick of. But anyways, I became a vegan and my parents were very accommodating to my um, new independence. And I was super surprised because my um, sinus infections went away. Like I was kind of, like my parents could even call into the doctor and just get a prescription for antibiotics because that's how frequent the sinus infections were. Like it was at least three or four times a year. Um, I was just on antibiotics pretty much my whole childhood and the doctors just thought I was prone to sinus infections. And so this is something that I noticed um, went away when I became a vegan. There was other problems with me being a vegan and I don't, um, tend to advocate for that lifestyle. Um, I had super low energy, I actually gained a lot of weight. I was kind of like what they call the Snapples and Snick Snickers vegan though, because I was, you know, still a teenager. <laughs> and so I lived on like candy and super not healthy vegan food. Like I'd throw in a meal here and there of um, like sauteed vegetables and um, olive oil. But mostly I lived on like white pasta, candy, Snapple, and coffee with soy milk. But anyways, my sinus infections did go away. So at 16 or 17, I thought like, oh, well, dairy is just bad for everybody. Nobody should have dairy because that's pretty much your mindset. Like when your brain's not developed is you assume that what's bad for you is bad for everybody. Um, and I was like, I, I did not thrive on the vegan diet. I was a swimmer and I was just exhausted and I was trying to get more energy for more carbs, which meant more pasta and more bread. Um, and I just could, I'd get like that sugar rush and then the crash and the sugar rush and then the crash. So my vegan career ended um, in about two years. It was my last year of swimming in high school. I was tired and I couldn't make the practices and so I started trying meat again. And the first thing that I tried was we went out um, as a swim team to round table pizza. And so the first meat that I ate, the first dairy that I ate in probably a couple of years was just big slices of greasy pizza. And besides that being kind of like a shock to my system, like I was still used to the bread because bread is vegan. And so I was used to that, but the cheese, like immediately I got a super bad sinus infection. Like it was within three days as I got that sinus infection back. And so that's how that kind of reassured me like, oh yeah, well dairy isn't bad for you um, or dairy isn't good for you. It's causing you all of these problems. And then I kind of experimented back and I found that it was dairy was the problem. It wasn't the pepperoni that was on the pizza. That was the problem. And so that was my late teens. Um, and then going up until I had my daughter at 23, we started the GAPS diet at 25. I would kind of go like, I really like ice cream. That's just something I really like. And every month or so, 
I would decide to try ice cream again and think maybe it didn't affect me. And so every month or so I would decide to try ice cream again because I was still pretty young um, in my 20s and I just had to like die on that hill every once in a while. And by then I was kind of far enough into natural medicine that I would just take an ibuprofen which is not natural but is better than antibiotics. Um, and so I take an ibuprofen and my body would clear the infection, but it was really still like three or five days of being miserable with the sinus infection every time I would eat ice cream. But that didn't stop me. Still once a month or so I would decide to do that and just like watery eyes. I'd break out in hives sometimes like head to toe hives um, and definitely that sinus infection would come back. So, um, forwarding to when I was 25 is we were doing the GAPS diet for autism recovery and it was just like such an intense diet and at the time like even gluten free wasn't normal yet and so it was such an intense healing protocol for my three year old that I thought like as her mom I'm going to do this with her um, just to make sure I like don't die and if I feel like I'm going to die I will like take her off the GAPS diet. So you can see our autism recovery and GAPS diet story for her in another video, but right now we're going to talk about how it surprisingly eliminated my food allergies. There was a lot of different things that it did for me um, that I was surprised at. I kind of was like, I will try the GAPS diet for autism because nothing else the doctors are doing is working for her, but I don't believe it's going to work. But I just thought I'd give it a try for 30 days, which is where my 30 days um, on the GAPS introduction diet um, ebook comes into play, but I gave it a try and it healed my dairy allergy in six weeks and it was such a shocker. I followed, I did like mostly grain free when I put my daughter grain free, um, but I wasn't strict about it for the first month. And then I did GAPS introduction diet, which is, it's a really um, restrictive protocol where you start out with well boiled meat and um, vegetables and chicken stock or beef stock. And then you slowly add things in that are designed to give your gut a lot of healing and your um, just like the nutrients that you need to repair your own gut. And then at the end of that, um, then at the end of that 30 days, my daughter was stuck on like stage four. So I stayed on stage four for a while. And I think it probably was like a PMS. Um, it's probably like a PMS craving time or something like that. But at six weeks into the GAPS diet, I ordered pizza from Papa John's. This is apparently my cheat food. And um, it gave me an upset stomach because I hadn't had gluten in a long time. But it, um, but the cheese didn't bother me. I didn't break out in hives, which like breaking out in hives, especially around my mouth, was one of the first things that would happen like within a couple hours of eating dairy when I was allergic to it. And then the sinus infections never came back. And so that was when she was three, now she's 12. And um, they've never come back because I had such a like strong digestive reaction to the pizza after being on GAPS intro for six weeks. I went back onto full GAPS and I just, but I started including dairy in my diet again. And even now this is like nine years later, I can eat like what I consider a normal amount of dairy. Like I even make that fathead pizza dough, which I'll link to um, down below. Um, that's mostly cheese. I can eat like I would say probably the average amount of cheese or more and I've never had the sinus infection to come back. I've never had a sinus infection since um, I did the GAPS intro and I was having like three or four a year and I haven't had the hives come back from the dairy. And so that is my I healed my dairy allergy um, on accident. I was really just trying to see if GAPS was like too crazy for my daughter. Um, but it really did work to heal my gut and just because it worked for me doesn't mean it'll necessarily reverse your dairy allergy in six weeks and I do like to caution people if you had an anaphylactic reaction to something it's just not worth the risk to ever take it but healing that gut like if you have food allergies um, healing that gut is going to be so essential to you and it's going to carry over into lots of different parts of your life which we've talked about in lots of other videos. So if you'd like to get started, I'd love to have you. I've written down like pretty much everything that we did because it was such a struggle for me to get started um, from meal plans to talking about how to talk to teachers and therapists to grocery lists to all sorts of different um, things like even the emotional aspect of being on a restricted diet and how to do it with our little kids, how to get picky eaters on the GAPS diet. I have all of that down below in my Gut Healing Starter Pack. I'd love to have you join me um, so that you can get these same benefits. When you're ready to sign up, go ahead and click that link below and I am happy to have you. 
Thanks, and we'll talk again soon.